starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Hey, BJ, Pat, how are you doing? Okay, I'm kind of turned around here, so I've made so many trades in the last 10 days. Um, we met, today is Monday, right? Okay, let me do the props then. Welcome to Breakfast with the Masters. It is the 18th of August. It's Monday. I didn't know it, but it's Monday. I was looking at my chart today and I was going, I know I gave homework and I'm looking at people's homework. What day did I give it? Have they seen this trade? Yeah, I know. That's, that's, I am, you know what? My stomach's a little upset and I am tired really from that. Nothing like that. Really wanted to review the last breakfast, but not up, uploaded as of yet. Yeah, unfortunately, Jorge, that was my fault. Um, I had a problem rendering it, but it it should be. No, I'm not sick. Sick. Don't worry about it. I have a uh, a frog in my throat. It's okay. Um, I went out to. I took my kids, and my wife, out to breakfast yesterday, and I think uh, I ate something that. It, you know, just, it was just breakfast, but, and it was all gluten-free, but something in there didn't work for me. It was, I, all I ate was bacon and hash browns and gluten-free toast, but something didn't work. Hey, Lewis, how you doing? Anyway, so I'm okay. Um, so anyway, um, the recording had, we had problems. Uh, I finally got it to work. Um, we see we have to change it from one format to another. Finally got it to do what, the right thing. On Sunday night, um, I thought Wendy got it up, but if, if not, she'll be up in an hour or two. Apologize for that, but hey, sometimes it happens. We're just two traders. Okay, um, now that I know when I gave the homework, oh, you missed the last class? Ooh, Gina. Ooh, that, that was a bad one to miss, I'd say. It was pretty cool, Gina, because. Not only did I make a trade, but three other people in the class at least You were at the orthopedic surgeon? Oh, I need a good one, you know one in Arizona. Oh, anyway. Um I'm not, I can't come to Canada. Anyway, um three other people in the class made the exact same trade at the exact same price and moved their stop at the exact same time all the way down. It was pretty pretty it would Pretty nice to see as a teacher. How about that? I mean, maybe more did. I don't know, but at least those three were up front and personal. Yeah, Al, watch it. It'll be interesting because uh, they're typing in what they're doing as fast as I'm doing it. It's pretty funny. All right, it's pretty pleasurable, not funny. Um, so then, Al, what I said was, Um, the trade was through the 14th. Matt says it was inspiring and hopeful as a student. It should be, yeah. Matt? Yeah, I know it's, it's a renewal time for almost everybody, okay? And um, Matt sent me his plan. Let me review BJ and Pat. I think they're a good... It's good to hear what's going on with them. They went through being members at Market Geometry for, this is their fourth year, four, four and a half years, five years, okay. She, they, they're repeating. Okay, they did two years of mentoring. Um, for the first two, two and, a, uh, two and a half years, they were not profitable. Not, not break even, not profitable. They were working their you know what's off. BG Impact corrects me. They were not at all profitable. Okay. They worked their, you know what, off. But they stick. They stuck with the process. Um, they saw the advanced position sizing, which is risk-reward, as well as how to use ATR to determine stops. And, and something clicked for them. And they went from not at all profitable to starting to be consistently 
slightly profitable. Do you say that's a correct description? Pat, PJ? Yep, and then uh, when it, and then when the morning session started, I'd say they go. They said it really helped. I'd say they go went parabolic. Don't you think? Yes, and uh, it has continued. Um, their their monthly, weekly, and monthly numbers are just wonderful. So. Um, you all should be inspired by that. I mean, and and that's also again. I I'm going to underline this again. I understand that you want to be, you want to get it all in six weeks. I understand that. And if I if I had the magic ball, I'd give it to you. But is there is no six week cure, okay? For some people, there's a six month. Or get get the break even trade around break even while you go through the process. For some people, it's a year. For some people, it's two years. Okay. Um, it depends on how long you can wait. If anyone gets it in six weeks, I'll be mad. Says BJ. That. Oh yeah. I mean, you guys worked really hard, BJ and Pat, and they're they're especially unusual because I have tutored uh, a handful of more than a handful, a uh, bus a bucket full of quote unquote quote uh, either married partners or people that have decided to share expenses and trade together um, and they almost never work almost never okay and and they they are good they're a good fit Pat says I am lucky to have a great lady well I think she's probably lucky to have you too Pat you guys you guys fit very well together Anyway, um, commitment to the process is, Al, is exactly right. It's very difficult. Um, I told you, Lane Crocker at Commodities Corporation, she wouldn't even look at your numbers. I don't care how well you were do it looking. If you were up 100% and it was before 18 months, if you said to her, hey, how about that year? She'd say to you, what year? She wouldn't know, wouldn't look, wouldn't care. If you didn't hit your blowout, which was 38.5%. Didn't know, didn't care. Okay, after 18 months, they'd start to track your performance. So, most of you here remember the, the you know, the brain surgeon discussion. You know, and with three PhDs, I've, I've got as much or more schooling than all the brain surgeons in the world. And I will tell you right now, trading is the hardest thing. Here. To become a top-level trader is as hard or harder than being a top-level brain surgeon. Okay? Sorry to all those brain surgeons out there. It's just difficult because... You have to really deal with your emotions. You have to deal. You're also, uh, you know, if it was two brain surgeons, two of the best brain surgeons in the world with dueling scalpels over top of a, you know, a stiff, that'd be a lot more like the market. Like, I get to cut first. For, no, yo, I get to cut first. No, let me cut that. No, don't cut that. You know, because that's what the trading is like. There's 20 million people trading at the same time. Four or five of them are the best in the world, and then on top of that, you're trying to get your money out. And you can. Don't get me wrong. But you have to learn where you fit and how to get it. And that's where people get in trouble, okay? It's a process. So when people say to me, well, you know, I, I don't know. I've been here six months, and I'm not yet profitable. I get that. I understand that. And I, I don't have anybody grumbling this time around. I don't mean it that way, but I'm just saying... You know, it's difficult. Jorge, do you want me to read that out loud? Okay. Jorge says, my experience. Three months to absorb all the free material. Then realizing it's for real. 
then he joined six to twelve months of market maps or premium and review the market geometry DVDs okay then breakfast and evening it's a two-year pro process at this full time I am now finally ready to submit homework there you go and his homework yeah Jorge your homework pretty good now I got lots of homework and it was all over the map so um, I am going to say this since we covered a trade all the way well let's go to the let's go to the charts let's get rid of this crap right away this is where we got out which was Thursday right and I said you know there's some cool trades here go forth and do the homework for the rest of the week isn't, isn't that what I said okay I'm gonna grab another chart um, And blank it out. Now, natural gas, if you remember, had these two weird bars. And in this particular case, then we saw them, uh, then we saw them again. something like that right once you get the process you have it for life says BJ and Pat you cannot take it they cannot take it away from you this process is not a gimmick it's something that you can have and keep with you the rest of your life you will pay more for college and not be able to make a dime until you get a job and learn on the job that's absolutely true if you learn to do this I'm not teaching you how to trade the S&P's with a system so if the S&P's blow up you're done, okay? I'm teaching you how to read the tape, which means, you know, if you're, we do have some 30 year olds here, but if you're 30 years old, you can trade, you know, till you pass away. <clears throat> if you're, uh, it's forever, right? You know, I, I don't expect ever to retire, ever. I expect that when I die, my broker, Michael, if he's not dead, whoever's running uh, Graybeards will close the positions. And I, hopefully that'll be 30 or 40 years from now. But same thing for you guys. Once you get it, you got it. <laughs> Matt Cube says, I'm with you. Pry the keyboard from my gold fingers. Right. If market geometry had been available in the 90s, I would never have gone to Duke University. Jorge, actually, we were kind of around, but it was just hard to find us. Um, I probably did. I had an email list, mailing list, with 4,000 members. Um it was free and it was on um, CompuServe that's where Shane met me that was before websites then websites came along and we put up media lines so oh it's so much better than it was yeah how is it different teaching as compared to those floor traders at the at the CME um, well None of them got it fast, even though the most of them had 20, you know, 20, 25 experience, years experience. High success rate, um, but really a pain in the ass to teach because you're talking to guys that have, you know, 15, 20, 30 million dollars in their account. And they get really pissed when you tell them you have to trade one lots. So, you know. It, I'd much rather teach people with a relatively clean slate. Um, from what I can tell, your program is better now than ever. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely moving, continue to make new highs. Amazing to hear these stories and how you've been around since the beginning and before the Internet. Oh, yeah. We, well, Jade, I started um, trading at the same time I was on a computer, which was actually DARPA, you know, the defense, the beginning of the Internet. It was before the internet, 1972. How about that? Uh, while I have so much to learn, no sucking up here. This is hard, but the process of logic makes sense and it works. Thank you. Appreciate it, David. You were a pioneer of starting a forum for a group to communicate. About. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we Yahoo groups opened and we 
we were one of the first people in the door and unfortunately at some point they decided to get cheap and they remember Scotty they cut off attachments then we had to walk away and uh, then we figured out how to do a website but it was you know the Yahoo group was actually pretty cool uh, because everybody could post and write and you could get it as an email address or you could get it as a you know it's like the Google group now but it was uh, we're talking about the 90s with electronics and automation has it made trading training easier harder or just different just different the good news is you know I can teach people in South Africa I can teach people in Indonesia I can teach people in um, China I can teach people in uh, obviously Australia Japan uh, New Zealand um, you know we have I think we have 47 countries Taiwan thank you David um, you know every there's there are a bit everywhere okay and I enjoy that quite a bit you know when I when I mentor Lewis in South Africa um, and he and I have dreams of going and hunting in Botswana I mean that really has added to my life even if it ends up just being a dream um, he's learning I'm learning about the world from all of you it's really wonderful um, I know where BJ and Pat live oh we will Lewis as soon as my yeah my yeah we, we will we have to plan and, and get ready because but um, BJ and Pat I know where they live because uh, I had a summer house probably 30 miles from a summer house on a lake about 30 miles from where they live right now and my brother had a house in the same town <laughs> and they live in a wonderful area um, so some people I know and then we have people in Phoenix which aren't that far away um, you know Shane is four hours away so it it goes from an hour and a half away to you know across the world so that's great um, it's same thing with uh, teaching at Stanford and MIT. Uh, University of Chicago still doesn't get it, unfortunately. Um, I said I won't travel anymore, and they said, "Okay, well, how about virtual?" I said that works for me. So back to the charts. Ah, um, I, you know, Lewis, that's not far fetched. Lewis said, "Ask Her Majesty to borrow the jet for a weekend." Yeah, that when it's time to do this, this is. That's not far fetched, and we'll probably get a couple guards as well. So we we can cut down on a little bit on the. We, we still need the guides, but we, we can have an extra couple guns with us. So, or actually one of the, uh, one of the grandsons. You know, Andy and. Uh, Andy and Harry will probably go. How'd you like? How'd you like a royal hunting party? I mean, they were both military. They love to shoot. Okay, so let's go back to natural gas. We had these. I'm not going to go show you the chart, but you can go back and look. We had these nice, weird bars, these big up bars. You know, it was like, you know, uh, and then we did kind of a, kind of a that. I guess I could do that. And then that. And then, uh, then we started selling off for Sirius like that, okay? And this, I think the spike was, I don't know, four double O ish, okay? And we got down to stop that one more time. We got down. Oh, I know. I have the repeater on. We got down to uh, a three eighty ish. I think it was just a touch above that, like three eighty three, but. Follow where I'm going here. So this is Thursday, and the trade was from 393 to 383 or something like that. Three, three, right? What was a? 
It was a nine and a half to one. I think BJ made ten to one. Let's say three ninety four. That makes sense? All the way down to 380, right? This, uh, this is just a big fat recap. Okay, now. This is where we walked away. And I said, okay, there's you know time left in the week. It was uh, Friday morning early. There's time left in the week, but there's already been some interesting trades. I want you to spend the rest of the week doing some homework and see if you can scout out a trade or two. Okay? Now, pretend you're a fifth grader. If this thing moves up, somewhere like this, yeah, Valley Trade, I mean, in a big in a big fat world and we actually saw you'll see we saw these bars terminate the move in fact we saw these bars down here terminate the move it's natural gas on steroids, remember? Now, I thought about showing some of the homework, but, okay, there's there's two groups. There's some people that wandered around and didn't get it. Well, there's three groups. There's some people that could only force themselves to try and get long, so they didn't get it either. And then there were some people that went, well, okay, I saw this on, I saw this at, fra you know, I saw this in breakfast, and here's the same trade, and they were patient and found the trade. And there were a good eight, nine, ten people that basically found the trade that I, that I took on Friday. I didn't, I did not play with the long. You could. There was a long trade there, but you had to be very aggressive. Um, you had to be fairly aggressive with the short, but there were markers. These bars looked exactly like these bars. We came back and filled the valley. Okay? Now, I will say this. Unless you were careful... There will be dragons when we got up there. I was out of town, and when I got back on Sunday, I had dad issues, so I'm full of excuses. No, we don't need excuses. That's all right. If you, if you didn't do it, you didn't do it. It's okay. It's just an exercise, Scotty. Um, and we had somebody that tried it, at least one person that tried it on eight-minute bars, and the bars were a little fast for them. I get that. That's fine. Um, they were in the right area. Here's the good news for them. They were in the right area, and they were sniffing in the right area, and they just got overwhelmed by how fast the bars were moving. But you're in the right area, okay? And whether you, you don't realize it at this point, but that means a lot. Okay, that means you're very close. So, 
take solace. If you got turned around and were trying to pick along as the thing turned around on the way down here, you're not getting it. Because this is really as simple as it's, not, it's, it's more simple than grabbing this freaking law. What is this whole thing? Can anybody tell me? It's just a big damn range. It's a 20 point range. Well, BG, I can't say that because it's the exact same trade I made. <laughs> so here's BJ. I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. We took another trade on Thursday, short at 391 and was out last night at 373 for a 17.4 profit. Again, there are many trades in this. Yeah, I took the exact same trade. I think I, you know our numbers might be off by, you know, a half a handle here or there. But you know, you can you go. I'll let you watch my thoughts and you can tell me if I miss something I mean but yeah exactly it's exactly it but you took the same trade that I took which was and what I thought basically was hey I've seen these lines if it shows any weakness we're likely to just go right here then just take your money and go walk away it was a bizarre exercise in seeing your chart show up in front of me as I followed the exercise yeah Matt Cube that was that was the idea is we were up in here when I gave we we're on our way up to here when I gave the exercise, and I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe we'll get lucky during Friday during the day. We'll get up here, show some weakness, and end up down here. And I, I don't know if anybody's going to trade it, but at least they'll be able to see it. Because my gut told me it's probably just a big 20-point range. And sure enough, it was a big 20-point range. So... In fact, I didn't know until I got up this morning whether or not I was out of mine, BJ, because you'll see how I dealt with mine. Uh, Some put the bars back on this. Right. I'm going to come back and look at this and say, I, what was I doing in the Euro? <laughs> I'll leave that on just to drive me crazy. All right, so here we go. So this is... Hi, guys. Kitty came to say hello. Um, so here's where we left off, and I gave homework. I got uh, I got stopped out right there. Okay. Literally. Uh, no, that's Thursday. Um, so that's where I got stopped out. So Thursday morning, um, before IB. I got stopped out. That's me getting stopped out right there for a profit. So, you know, I was 9 to 1. BJ was 10 and changed to 1. Okay? So let's follow this through now. See these bars right here? You guys see the vertical movement and volatility change? Do, 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 do. Can you see our failure bars and our failure bars that you know see them they're exactly the same here now yeah. well yeah, it's I'm trying to think of the best way to highlight this look at the chart while I try and figure out what I'm doing You have to pay attention at this level to get the process right long term. Well, come over here. Okay. Okay. At, we come up, make a high, and leave this. We come up, leave a high, and then right here. See it? Come up, leave a high, fall apart. What is that vertical line down the middle? Um, oh, I must be somewhere else. Failure bars meaning where the move is about to reverse. We look at. Can you see this bar? And see this bar. And see what I wrote. Okay, look. 
it looks like it's making new highs. It's forget the triple top crap. Look at the speed change. We're on our way up, and we're still going up. Okay, but look at the these are maximum excursion lines. Look at them change. Look at the speed change. Can you see us rolling over? And you know the Doors song, This is the End? This is the end right here, babe. Period. And if you don't get that, and you're still trying to play long, you be dead. Okay, now it gives you an opportunity. Look at the, here's where it all hangs out. This is your opportunity right here. Right? Blah, 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 blah. Just boxing in. So here's a top. Here's a here's where we expect a pendulum pullback from a top. Here's our top. Here's our possible shoulder. Do we do a warning line? Do a modified shift? Well, we know the modified shift is the same as this maximum excursion line. So here's our top, our shoulder. We want to sell a weak reaction. That's what Amos tells us. Remember that? Top, shoulder, sell the weak reaction. Don't be in such a hurry. There's the weak reaction right here. Boom. Done. Top, shoulder, weak reaction. Are you using 24-hour data? Yes. But you could use, you could use uh, five in the morning to five at five in the evening Eastern time if you want, and get the same results on a time based. Okay. And of course that flips out to three, whatever. So we're still going. All we're doing is boxing and profit. It's very simple. It's see it looking for a bottom and has not found a bottom. Finally finds a bottom. We can box in. Here's a really long maximum excursion line. We can't get above it. Come down, retest the bottom. Helps us with the quality of the bottom. The stop stays the same. Heading lower. Finally, we have new high. And we got the crazy natural gas. Here's our bars again, the crazy bars. They're just over upside down. When they do that, I don't want to play anymore. Okay? I could just go to the market right here. I would have made more money because of BJ did. BJ went just went vertical, just give me my money, I'm out of here, BJ and Pat. Which is probably what I should have done. I just put a stop on it. It was dinner time. Yeah, I got out at that vertical move. Is there a way to read through those? Um, frankly, I think that's a good idea, getting out at the vertical move. So, you're, you're thinking of next trade. Well, I don't know. We'll go through the next trade. But this is where BJ and Pat just said, okay, this is out of character. And I got 20 cents in it. Let me just take my money and let somebody else deal with the out of character. Okay, all right, so this is where we stopped. Yeah, I did do a session on these, yeah. Natural gas gets spastic. Sometimes it's two bars, but sometimes it's five or six bars. They're wide range, they're out of character, and then they go back to a normal movie. It's like a reset. It's like a kid with a attention deficit disorder. It's It behaves for a while, and all of a sudden it goes crazy for three, four, five bars, and then, oh, okay, never mind. And if you're still here from the Washington Post, don't send me an email about attention deficit disorder, and you're going to write a column, okay? I'm, I'm 55 and older because I can be cranky and call people darling and stuff like that. So we're pulling back. 
Lots of people were doing, um, or some, I shouldn't say a lot. Some people were doing uh, frequency to the upside, looking for a long here. And didn't get filled. I don't. I, I don't seem to remember anybody that got. Did anybody get long and catch this? I did, I don't. I didn't read one. I read some people. I read somewhere people were trying, thinking, hoping to get long, and then didn't get long. But okay, so. <clears throat> Let me slope a little bit here. So I'm just I'm just doing the highs and lows here now, okay? As, and I'm paging through it. It's Friday, right? We're out. We're done with breakfast. So I start marking highs and lows. Now take a look at this one. This is a advanced multi pivot line. This obviously is more after the fact. Yeah, it's really a, it's if you think about it, it's really a uh, maximum excursion line. But it better describes, and you can you can do these. It better describes what price is doing here. So this is the 2D. Here's the 3D. This is how I started out. I, I I'll have to correct Shane in the in one of the midday things. Dr. Andrews never did anything on maximum excursions. I don't know what he's talking about, but um, this is where it came from. I started to look at these and say, okay, this is what I expect, but this is what we're getting. So I started to draw these in after the first touch, and that turned into maximum excursion lines. So we pull a high, boxing in, and you can see our slope line is holding. At this point, I need to see some change or I'm going to still be tipping on the long side. Does that make sense? Now, what are the positions? They're long or they're hurt or they're licking their wounds, right? But it's been such a long grind up, it's hard to believe that anybody could be short. So we haven't taken out any bottoms in a long time. I'll bet there's 15 swings in a row here. That we haven't taken out one bottom. So it's hard to believe that anybody is still short, but who knows. But when this bar happens, if they're still short, they got a margin call and they're gone. Okay? Just stop and think. This is 24 hours after. This is less than 24 hours. This is, uh, sorry, this is four hours after breakfast with the master on Friday. Four hours. Remember I, I gave you homework on Friday morning? Okay. Four hours later, as you're doing your homework, we're right back at where the shorts came in. Right, We're right at the valley. So it should be kind of imprinted in your memory. Four hours, right? This one is not out of the market. It's not. It shouldn't be out of your market memory. Even if you didn't make the trade. Because we just talked about it. All right, so we make this huge bar up. What are the positions? Everybody's long or dead. Have I seen these bars in natural gas? Oh yeah, now I remember. See him? On the bottom and then at the very beginning of the first trade. We had a gap on the first trade, remember? Just if you take this bar out, this is where this first trade started. We had this gap up. And we're right at the same area. We're right with 395. Reversals are marked by wide range bars in natural gas. I didn't say that, Gina. I said natural gas goes spastic 
which this is doing right now, okay, and then it'll settle down to a normal market volatility. We don't ever want to trade in this crap. Even if you get the top right, you don't want to trade here because you can't afford to stop. You can't afford a five a five pip stop and a five handle stop on this. All right. So we don't ever want to trade this stuff. However, it should now. It goes three, four, five, six bars, and then all of a sudden it'll go back to net normal volatility. That's when we want to trade. Okay. And if it reverses, so be it. Also, the speed of those bars, not enough time to enter a trade. Yeah, but it, I mean, you'd be chasing when we don't impulse trade. I had somebody in mentoring last week, and I spanked them on the hand with the ruler and said, okay, you no longer are allowed to use anything other than limit buy or limit sell orders, which is what you should have been doing to begin with. How many of you enter at the market? And I know some of you do. Sometimes is one time too many. Trying not to anymore is one time too many. Never is the right answer. If you miss a trade, you miss a trade. Okay? We don't use market orders to enter, ever. Limits. Getting out is different. That's not what I asked. I asked about entering. Okay? If you've had enough and you want out, or something came up and you have to get out of the market just get the hell out don't play around with it don't you know, let me well if I put a bid in here maybe I'll get hit just if it's time to get out get out that's fine but when you're entering Uncle Tim has now put the rule down on it if you don't understand it now let me just say it again you are not allowed to use anything other than limit buys and limit sells and put your stop order in at the same time so let me read what BJ and Pat said. Not us. We have a price in for entry stop and a stop and target and before and when they hit the button it all transmits all three at the same time. Okay? So they've got contingent orders, stop and profit, and they've got a limit entry. Okay? It's far better to wait for the bus than to chase the bus. There you go, Carlos. I like that. All right. So, we first want it to settle down. We don't want to trade this wide volatility, right? So, as we pull off, I moved this because the damn, I couldn't figure out how, it kept popping up early, like this, now I remember. Something about the pixelation in here wouldn't allow me to do it. So, the question is, is this the top? Now, we don't know, right? I mean, all it's done is pulled back to the first uh, runaway bar, and we're consolidating. We don't know if this is the bottom or the top or what this is. And we, now we really don't know. So it's pulling back up, and depending on what it does up here, it's going to tell us whether or not this is a shoulder or a run to new highs. Does that make sense? This is either the shoulder right here, and we're going higher, or we're going to form a shoulder, and then we're going to go lower. We don't, we don't want to buy the top. We don't want to buy the bottom. We want to wait for the shoulders. Still don't know. Making higher lows. We got one high end, making two higher lows. Leave a high, start to close lower but we're still in this tiny range 391 to 395 first close through I'd say the shelf low second close well maybe we got something going here I really hate that but I bet I'm not gonna be able to fix it Yep, okay, cool. All right, so we're through the shelf bottoms. 
and we leave a lower high. Can you see that? For me, I wasn't, oh my God, let me, I have to get short. I always, you know, kind of, sort of, maybe leading a little short. I, I'm still more watching than anything else. For whatever reason, it didn't it didn't work for me yet. Leave a bottom, start to turn up. Leave a, a lower high. So I mean, you could have played around in here, but look at all of these are one bar turnarounds. It would be an awful hard to get short right here. Awful hard to get short right here. Do you consider that last sell off was rather quick? Is barely a minute? Yeah, it was rather quick. I mean, I didn't, like I said, I I watched, but I went, I, ugh, I don't know. What am I supposed to do here? Not only was it only a minute, but look at it. It's a it's a V top, so where exactly would I get short? So if it's moving too fast for you, and, you know, this whole thing, Ouija's right, this whole thing is one minute, okay? If it's moving that fast... You can either go to a 377 ticks, or you can just slow down and enjoy the ride. Just wait. It, Ouija, at this point, it doesn't make that much sense to me. Not enough that I'm willing to risk any money. Does that make sense? Somebody's doing a whole lot of something real fast, and it doesn't make sense to me yet. Uh, am I impressed by the speed of the selling? I'm not impressed. I'm I, I, there's no lot here. How many times have I said when I start to see things that make logical sense, then I'll trade. The only thing I've seen that made logical sense is I've seen these bars before, but I've seen them on the top and the bottom and I don't, this I don't know what the hell this is yet. So since I, it's moving so fast, I can't put any logic to it, that's fine. Go ahead and trade. I don't have to trade. That's my edge. That's your edge. I don't have to trade right now. Do you guys, are you guys follow me? There's 15, 20 bars there in one minute. I don't have to trade. I don't have to chase the short. The hell with them. Go ahead. Could be a pause before it continues up. Could be anything. Yeah, we get to choose our bus, says Gina. Yeah, and uh, me, I chose to sit down. You know what? They have the little benches. Sit there, open my newspaper, and wait. So, comes down. Forget, forget the tick numbers in class. I worked on this last night at 880 ticks. Oh, you King says, I forgot the tick numbers in class. I worked on this last night on 888 ticks. It works better for me. There you go, you King. Whatever works for you. If this is too fast for you, slow it down. And this part was too fast, period. Look at this. From here to here is two minutes. We use 377, BJ says. Yeah, I often use 377. I didn't on this example because I just wanted to stay on the same chart. But yeah, I mean, two minutes, what the hell are you supposed to do with that? Right? I mean, it's prime time New York. This is this this is frankly, this is people getting hurt. Period. It's people trying to get out. It's people thinking that the top that they need to buy because it's a pullback, and then they get stopped out. It's people just trading back and forth, and they're trading. They have no idea what they're doing. Period. It's impulse trading. Just don't do it. All right. So that can't be overemphasized not to do anything until it makes sense. I still can't always hold my water, but success rate goes from 15 to 50 percent when I'm not just jamming trades with in the lines. That's what Kyle. That's absolutely right. You just have to wait until until it's like until it hits you in the head with a hammer you just have to wait 
so it's making lower highs lower lows and um, you know maybe you're tempted I, I don't know why that's that color but <coughs> I had my first alt in any pivot here we come down leave a low make a high and this is another one of those see the blue this is another one of those it could be 2d could be 3d advanced multi-pivot lines and now I'm showing you where advanced multi-pivot lines turned into maximum excursion lines okay this is where they came from if you if you want to know where they came from I don't know how many years ago but draw 2d and throw, draw 3d So, so 3D is doing pretty darn good. The 2D has never been touched. We're pulling back now. What we have to ask ourselves right here, we've been talking about this a lot lately. The quackity? Hmm. I like that. It's not a word, but I like it. What's the quality of this top? So our slope line's working good. Now we're coming, we're swinging up right into this top. And the question is, what's the quality of this top? And we have no idea. It's still tra trading fast. From the crazy bars to here is nine minutes. So it's trading crazy fast, okay? Even I am challenged to draw this fast. What about excursion line from the high? Um, yeah, we'll get there. The problem with an excursion line from the high is we, we have made the other shoulder, Jose, so there's there's no point. We've got lower highs and higher lows. You know, we got a mess is what we got. We got a not only that do we have a mess, but we have a mess that's moving at hundred miles an hour. So anybody there were some people that got caught in this trying to do stuff. You were probably doing bar by bar replay over the weekend and didn't realize how fast these bars were the truth is they're moving so fast it was hard to draw this kind of stuff now let me just give you a tip if you use an ensign just highlight it and then hit spacebar and copy them and you can do them a lot faster but you know drawing anything in in a market where the bars are printing every 20 seconds is very difficult forget about paying paying attention trying to figure out what it means but just trying to mark stuff is almost impossible if it's that hard to mark stuff do you want to trade in that market never is the right answer okay someone has an edge but it sure as hell isn't us now you could go yeah you can't get centered now you could go to a bigger time frame or a space frame you could go to 377 or 888 right slow it down with more ticks yeah absolutely okay so if you're trying to if you're trying to chart this and trying to pay attention and it just out of control start go from a 189 to a 377 or even in, you know double that something like 888 okay no problem with that so if it's moving that fast or if you like 189 BJ says if it's really fast they use 1444 there you go all right if you like 189 you want to stay with 189 wait for the market to slow down it's like little kids okay they can they they can only run 100 miles an hour for so long and then what do they do then they they slow down ah uh. They get their bottle and they, you know, toddle around a little bit. Wait for the market to slow down. It will. You don't have to trade. You're going to have to beat that self out, that part out of you. 
I have to trade. I must trade. I'm in front of the screen. I have to trade. Even though I have no idea what's going on, I have to trade. No, you don't. Your edge is that you don't have to trade. So watch what watch what's happening. Now we're making higher lows. Now we're testing the quality of this top. What's the quality of this top? Well, eat into a little bit and making higher lows again and testing those lows. Testing, look, now look at our highs. See them? Our highs are getting eaten up here. So we're stacking up higher highs and higher lows. So is it time to be short? It is slowing down. Okay, now between here and here is 10 minutes. This is slowing down. It's still probably moving fast. And we don't have any logic yet. Except that the top has just been broken. So the quality of that top, if it goes any higher, top has no quality. So not interested in it. Okay, the, the top is dead. So, right now, here's what I know about this market. It ran up from 380 to 395. Now it's been in a range from 390 to, th to I don't know what the top is, but it's a very, very fast range that's starting to slow down as it heads up. Okay? but it's going back towards the top of the range. That's what I know about this market. I don't know anything else. Making new highs, pulls back. The prior high becomes a baseline. We take out the high. Okay. Make a high, close on the low. Next bar, opens on the high, closes on the low. Jose. I finally have something I can draw. So I add my maximum excursion line. Right? But you need, you need a pullback before you can draw one. We don't know if this is any good yet, do we? We haven't the faintest idea. We're still stacking up higher highs and higher lows. How, however, I, I, I need, I don't care about the test and stuff, slow down. I need some logic is what I need, okay? I don't need, uh, which is be tested. I'll take that back, Al. If it gets tested and, and fails, then I'll have logic that works. Okay, I'll take that. But it looks to me like if we're going to make a shoulder, this might be one. It might be one. If it, is, if it turns out to be one, then I'll have a piece of logic. Are you, do you follow me? The market has slowed down considerably. We went from crazy fast to, well, it's relatively fast, but it's slowed down considerably now. We, we might have a high. So I've got my one, two, three. I, I don't think I showed where. Okay. So I'm wondering, is this a shoulder? So, if this ends up being a shoulder, I'm going to want this. Does that make sense? Okay. So, shoulder, question mark? I'm... I'm not looking for Mr. Goodbar, which was a fine movie. For those of you that are old enough to remember that. I'm looking for logic. I don't have to trade until I get logic, okay? 
So I'm three bars in here. I draw in the median line. One, two, three, four, five. We close on the median line, on the upper parallel. If you want, you can trade here. Okay, you can be short at nine, three ninety three and a half. This full back. Can I widen back out? Um, I want you, hang on, first I want, Maceo, I will, but first I want you to pay attention. Okay, I want to teach you something, okay? I don't want what you want. Even though you haven't really taken anything out yet. Matt, did you hear what I said? If you really want to, you can try and take a shorter. I didn't tell you you should. Pay attention. If you want, you can take a shorter. It's been five bars, and now we have separation, okay? Orient yourself. Well, Gina says weak reaction of a shoulder. That's what you have to ask yourself. Is this is this the reaction? I want you to get I want you to think about this in three parts. Top, shoulder, weak reaction. Okay? The good trades have obvious top shoulders that are lower, a lower shoulder if we're on the go on the downside. A top, a lower shoulder, and then a weak reaction, which means a lower high. And the pullback is pretty good, is is you know, is it, it shows weakness. Here's what I don't like about this. Let me widen out now. Remember, top, we think we're forming shoulder here. Here's what I don't like about this. Are you ready, Gina? Okay. If you want to get short here, have you shown any weakness yet? Everybody else, jump in. So is it really... And I'm not just talking about confirmation. What I'm saying is, does this look like a weak reaction after a shoulder? It looks like a giant. It looks like a, a like a tiny pullback, doesn't it? Do you see that? It doesn't mean that it can't be a great sale. And again, I, my first 25 years of trading. Okay, Jade says, not yet, but it's a logical point to expect it. You're missing the point, Jade. Is, have you seen any weakness here? Between here and the pullback, have you seen any weakness? Okay, so it's not a logical point to expect what I just explained, which is shoulder, top, shoulder, and then weakness in a pullback, right? I see this all the time. They're little ones, yeah. It's the okay. It's just another box, and that's all it is. It just happens to come at the line. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't go down from here. Don't get me wrong. But we're trying to learn high probability, repeatable trades, right? There's two problems with. Yeah, we're not the. Uh, we're, but we, yeah, but we're it's the wrong time, right? Right, BJ? Correct? Yeah, okay, so you're going to trade at the same place I am, trust me. But for best risk reward, I want to sell up there. I need to rethink. No, Gina, wait. Time out. Gina says, I got to sell here, otherwise, I won't have good risk reward. How do you know that you're not going to be back up here over here? There's not really, Paul says, there's not really any weakness still flowing up in an orderly fashion. To me, it's only 50 50. I'd agree. What are you in a hurry about? And again, it might fall. But this is not weakness after a shoulder, this is just a minor pullback. Okay? I'm trying to show you a pattern 
that Amos was using, you know, for a four-year trade, but we can use intraday if if we learn it and pay attention to the details. All right. So let's say we go short here. Are you with me? Let's be like a puppy dog. We're all excited. We learn the lines. It's at the line, and it's below the maximum excursion line. So like a little puppy dog, we're going to go short, okay? Sometimes it'll work. But again, there be dragons here, okay? Now watch what happens. Let me, I'll go through a little bit before I explain anymore. Let's see if we get filled. Okay, we get filled. We're using a point and a half for a stop. Everybody with me? Okay. We had plenty of opportunity to get short. We're at the bottom of the first box. Okay, that's cool. Ah, this is our weakness coming now. Now do you see the weakness? Aha! So I know some people are going to say, see, I caught this. Luckily, well, some people are going to say, I caught it. No, no, you're short right here. Gina, see it? Gina, you're short. Remember, we're all short right here, right? Play with me. Gina, tell me you're short right there. No, no. Well, we're going to go through this exercise, and we're going to explain why you don't want to get short up here. Do you like two multi-pivot line breaks to give you a, uh, to give you a bit more of a tell of weakness in this case? It, it's this is the first sign of weakness that we've had since this break. Okay, but this is the shoulder, so we need another sign of weakness. Okay. You'll know it when you see it. Okay. What was important to take out? Probably these double bottoms. There's a ledge right here. You need to take out this ledge. Okay, but some people, I guarantee you at least half the people in the, pre, in the midday session, the market map session, are going, hey, I caught near the top. I don't really care because I'm short here. Follow me? So we can play like we're all short here. That's fine. And, you know, uh, uh, you know what? They're all going to say 80% going for the median line, right? Make sense? Okay. And lots of you are in this space. I'm going to say um, what BJ and Pat said. This break, and it's the same thing for me. This bar right here, is not cooperating. There it goes. <laughs> uh, this bar right here. Is the tell. I know I would feel gutted not catching that after that bar prints. No, this is the tail. This is the tell. This states the intention of the market. I, I, okay, so Paul says, would you expect a reaction after that tell? No, I expect it will we'll probably have more sell-off. But see, I then expect, just like I did in the last trade, a pendulum pullback to give me an area to sell. Because I want a top, a shoulder, some weakness. Why is this the tell? This is the first weakness in this after our move back up and finding the shoulder, this is the first weakness there is. Sharon, do you see that? Breaking the shelf is the first sign of weakness after making this high. So we want a top, a shoulder, 
and then we want a weak reaction, which means we need to show some some weakness, and then we want to leave a lower high, which is where we want to try and get short. Get it? Top, shoulder, show weakness, sell a lower high. Jade's got it. We want the market to cascade, and we want to catch the, one of the cascades. But first, the market has to cascade. That's a very good description, Jade. Okay? So first, you want to see it start to cascade. Absolutely. All right. So here's our sign of weakness. But if we're all short here. Even if you get it, remember that you're short here. Okay? Because I want I want to go through the dangers of being short there. Ready? So we're looking for the median line. Fifty. Even that's not three hundred. Okay, so I'll move it when we get there. We we are continuing lower. All right. Let's see if I can move this puppy. We're not at three to one, but we're more than twice our. Now we're still not. We're not even at twice our stop. Okay, you risked 150 bucks. You're up 280 bucks. Okay, are you with me? And we're not at the median line. And it's straight down. My stop is right there. It's the green one. And it's your stop as well, Jose. So at the moment, at this low, we're not even at twice as much as what we were risking. No. We were risking 150. That does look good. No. We're, we're risking a buck and a half. Okay. And we went from 393 to 390. Jose. Okay. I know you don't believe me, so I'll prove it to you. There's your stop, okay? Hello? Now do you feel better? Sometimes you have to trust the teacher, okay? I'll just leave it there so I don't get the question again. You're not even at twice your stop yet. Look at the ATR. At 0.62, you need to use a buck and a half of natural gas. That's a buck and a half, okay? You with me? So what are you going to do? You can't, there's no place to box in anything. And you're really not at twice what your risk, so it's pretty hard to go to break even, right? You're a sitting duck. You have to leave the original stop in, Ouija says. And I think that's the correct terminology, sitting duck. In fact, you, if you want to be Ouija, you could be the chief sitting duck. How about that? Does everybody understand what Ouija just said? Yes, you're short. Yes, you've got $280 in it, but you can't move your stop. Follow me? So, sitting duck. I think it is a descriptive term. There's no structure within that. Ca this isn't a cascade. This is straight down right now. This is straight down. The big moves of the cascade. <laughs> Mad cute. I'm not going to repeat that. Okay. All right. So we leave double bottoms, and I mark it. You see, I've marked one, and I've marked two alternating pivots. And 
and take a look. I'm marking every pullback and uh, and every top. I'm, I'm marking every box here because the market slowed down, and I'm trying to make sense of this now because what I'm thinking is high shoulder. Will it give me a reaction? A weak reaction to sell, which means a lower high. A pendulum pullback. Follow me? Okay, now, but you're short here, and you had $280 in it, and now it's starting to get eaten up. Watch. Whoops. And we're testing now. I guess I can't grab that, so I'll say this. Probably comes up later, but... Right now, we're trying to test the quality of this bottom. Will this bottom hold? Now, if you're short, of course, you don't want this bottom to hold, correct? So you watch with displeasure as it tests it and turns back up. And tests it at least so we leave another high and a second high and a third high and a fourth high and now we're outside our median line do you see it now somebody cascading back up yes somebody at this point put out a warning line and um, you know what I'll just do that for them I think All right. <clears throat> but if you're short here, you're not only up a hundred and thirty bucks. How are you feeling? And you're outside the median line, by the way. Yuck. That's a descriptive term. Scared, bad, not good, anxious, skittish. Plan is falling apart. Been there many times. I don't want you to be there very many times, Jade. I want you to be there only a few times from now on. So that's why we're going through this so carefully. This is the problem with entering too early. Thank you, Keith. Okay, if you're a puppy dog and you enter too early, then unfortunately you generally end up getting chased out sometimes at break even but unfortunately too many times at a loss Carlos says if you don't accept your role as a sitting duck what happens is you begin to micromanage yep so you could do one of two things here you could believe that you're right and this is just a pullback on the way up and you're not going to worry about it because there's no place to put a stop or you could go to break even so at this point be honest if you were short there and we're at this point would you a not say hey I got my plan I'm not going to worry about it or B would you go to break even and say you know, I was almost to twice as much as my stop. I don't want to lose money on this trade. So I've got break even, break even, stay with the plan, stay with the plan, break even, break even, stick with the plan, a gutting break even, break even, break even. I would have been at break even, break even. I have my plan, I stick with it, break even, break even, probably break even. Okay, good. Stick with the plan. So everybody has what they're going to do right going to be is an emotional reaction is it not that is correct break even is not logical at this point it's an emotional choice here's the problem if you get stopped out of this trade if you trade too early and it ends up being a trade to the downside Are you listening? Listen to this very carefully. 
if you try to get short up here and you end up getting either stopped out at a loss or stopped out at break even yes the problem is that BE is where you should be getting short well plus or minus a few ticks yeah and on top of that even worse will you have the emotions to get short that second time yeah happens too much then miss the real move probably not I would say a hundred percent not because you'll have you'll be stopped out for a loss or a break even and have to be getting short within 10 minutes you king says no I quit looking at the chart I stopped out well you know what you king that's exactly what I do. I don't feel like crap, David. David says, I feel like crap. I don't feel like crap, but if I get stopped, I go, oh, well, I'll come back tomorrow. That's fine. It's actually better to get in if you get the opportunity. Um, that depends on your trading, on your managing yourself plan, Jose. If you allow yourself after a loss, let's assume you take a loss, to go in the same direction the same day, I don't. I meant too early of an entry that a break even stop, David. I did I don't follow you. I missed your line of thought. There's too many people typing. Anyway, yeah, it's okay. If you if you get in and get stopped out, whether it's break even or at a loss, and then it leaves the lower reaction that you should be selling, you won't sell it. Break even with no structure burns through too much psychological capital. Absolutely, Carlos. Thank you. So trading too early is really, really difficult. It'll cost you a lot of really wonderful trades. I, I know it's a nice short early on, but now watch what happens. You're all still short, okay? So I go to the warning line. I'm going to Andrews. Let me just put that warning line out there. Because it comes out and tests the shelf and then turns lower, right? Sorry, sliding parallel. Thank you, Matt. I put the sliding parallel out, right? As long as it doesn't break the sliding parallel. Oh, I've got hope, right? You with me? All I needed to do now is get inside. And I'm inside. All right, damn. I'm good. I got this, right? Y'all feeling better? Sign of Sign of weakness. Drink the Kool-Aid. Please pretend that you're short. Trying to stay off emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you should. Even if you took this short, don't play the emo emotional roller coaster. Just do the drawings. This is a logical place with the sliding parallel. The trade works or it doesn't. All right, here we are. Checking the quality of this bottom out. See it? You want this thing to bust. Now, if you're smart, you have a piece of logic and you have it in your trading plan that you can, you know, eject if if a if a logical if a piece of logic shows up, what would be the trigger to get you out? Break in the sliding parallel, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Scotty. Not a higher low. Because you still won't know whether because it might just come up to here and then right. But a break of the sliding parallel, Andrews would tell you, hey, the game's over, buddy. Okay? So that's just something to remember. You can use it or don't use it, but um, you know, at that point maybe go to break even or get out. Probably go to break even, okay? Because you didn't, you really didn't have the logic down here. Go, it, you know, you didn't have two to one. So maybe here, go to break even if it breaks the sliding parallel. We haven't broke it yet, but never mind. All right, so now 
I know you entered here. You can either dump the median line or you can shift it. Me, I wasn't trading yet, but I did a modified shift, which I don't even have actually have to do because, of course, it's the maximum excursion line, right? Correct? If I do the modified shift, I can see that price is stopping right at the median line. See it? Right where it's supposed to. And where are we likely to go now? The upper parallel. And take a look. If we're at break even, we're probably going to get stopped out right where we should be entering at the upper parallel, right? Right near, right where we're all short, not just you, Gina. We're all short. All right, so watch price swing. Now, if you were short, you're, believe, you're, believe me, you're not going to turn the modified shift on. You're going to say, I'm, I'm going to stick with this, you know, or I'm going to violate my plan, one or the other, but you're probably not going to do that. Okay, you're now, if you had break even. So now we come up and we leave a high testing the upper parallel. All right, there's our test. So here's the top shoulder weak reaction, right? This is what Amos is describing. And look at the test and no follow through. See it? And that's nice separation. Everybody with me? Gee, what time is it, BJ? Pat? Getting darn close to, right? So I go, okay, shoulder, top, weakness. Here's my weak reaction, my reaction is after weakness. See it? I'll, get, I'll be willing to get short right here. First bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. And I, I'm just moving along with, see it? I'm moving along the upper parallel. See it? You got it? Short. I'm short. For those of us that were short and went to break even, you are stopped out. Right where you should be getting short. How are you going to get short? Emotionally, you can't get short. And second of all, you're just getting taken out at this bar. Are you going to turn around one bar later and get short again? I don't think so. You didn't go into or under the upper parallel because you were trying to catch the high with your stop, right? You didn't go into or under the upper parallel. Restate that, Matt Q. I don't understand what you're saying. I would see that high close if I was filled here and think I was wrong. Oh, you mean I'm getting short? Yeah, but wait. Well, hang on. Yes, but I have my order in the market, Gina, right? So I don't care. Why didn't I buy more probability of getting in? That's a good question. What can I buy with my stop? I want to buy as much as I can, okay? I want to buy three to five ticks above the high. That's what this does, Matt. Okay, and that's the, the pure reason, and I don't want to use, I don't want to pay two and a half points. I think I use 1.8.
I added a call. I, I figured it out. If I, I would have been fine with 1.5 here, but by here it was 1.8. Okay, so. A question. So Amos's rule is that the weakness can be just a few bars after the shoulder or many bars later in this case. Well, Jade, but it has to show weakness, not just a, one lower bar. It's got to show weakness. And it's not a rule. I'm sorry I have to take that away from you. Rules are black and white. It's not a rule, okay? It's a it's a guideline. You know, what do they say in the Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, we thought it was more of a guideline. They say something like that. It's not a principle. That's too strong a word. I know you're just trying to understand. I'm trying to describe it to you, Jade. Um, would you describe definition of weakness? We have to take out some lows, David. It can't just be a lower bar. We've got to take out some lows. We need a sign of new sellers. So if we have a shelf, for example, underneath us, we need to take out that shelf. Show me some aggressive sellers. Then I have weakness. Then you have to wait for it to swing back. And that will be your the reaction that you're going to sell. Got it? So it there it's not a rule, it's a guideline. It's just a it's a description of what he would be looking for, okay? And we don't have it written down, unfortunately. We just have what Tim remembers. The only hard rule are proper stops. Well, not only proper stops, but always use stops, right? No stop, no trade. Okay, so this is me, but, you know, seems like we also know the quality of the bottom and it held. How do you deal with picking which side to trade, which assumes one side will fall? Well, Scotty, because I know this bottom held, but I've got a top and a shoulder, and this high is higher than this high, which is higher than, and I'm coming back and I'm making a lower high. I know I do have a bottom here, and this is what I'm going to have to deal with first, right? So this will be my first problem right here, and which also happens to be, by the way, the median line. See it? It's funny how it almost always works out that way. Your first problem, even horizontally as well as sloped, is the median line and some vertical or some horizontal line. It just works out that way. It's just the geometry of the situation, I guess. So here's the thing, Scotty. I've already picked the short side. And this bottom tells me that I'm going to get a pen. This is what tell this bottom tells me I'm going to get a pendulum pullback. I've already got the frequency I'm willing to sell because of the shoulders. Now, you, you, if you want, why is the time important here? What, oh, you, you mean when I was asking what time is it, Sean? Oh, uh, BJ told me what time they went short, BJ and Pat. We, we were just... You know, best friends checking out. No, I they, I. they told me what time they got short, and we're looking at what time I get short. I guess at this point the scales are tipping in your favor. Well, again, you you can get stopped out, Jose. No doubt about it. But I've picked my side. BJ said we we saw it too late, but we knew it was going down. So they're going to get in a little bit later than me, but it you know it didn't cost you much money. There, there were uh, there were plenty of opportunities to get short here on this shoulder or this reaction. This reaction was really slow. So let's see what happens. So I get filled. Okay, you got any everybody that was stopped is now out at break even. I'm get I'm a good broker. I'm taking out a break even. You can now shift. 
now now take a second to clear out your mind and go back to Amos thought top shoulder we see weakness now we're going to sell the pendulum pull back that's my modification of words he didn't use the word pendulum pull back but we're going to sell the pendulum pull back after we see the top and the shoulder okay if we have the frequency which we get either from the modified shift and or the line of maximum excursion. Okay? Questions? With it? No? Okay. You can sell up here, but the dangers are that if you don't get to the median line, you didn't until we did a modified shift, you're screwed. Because if it gets back up here, you're going to get stopped out, but we're still in the top shoulder looking for the reaction mode. You're not going to have the emotional capital and or the time to get short. You're just going to be stopped out, and then you're going to watch this. When you say we were expecting a pendulum pullback because of the quality of the bottom, well, let me ask you this year. Let's start with the easy part. If price is going down, we left a high, a lower high, and now we're all the way down at 390, let's say. We need a pullback to get short, don't we? Price fluctuates. We need it to fluctuate to the upside to get short. That's the weak reaction that we're going to sell. And this only makes sense. This bottom held, it's going to propel price back higher. If we're correct that this is a downtrend, the top, the shoulder, and then the weak reaction should be high, lower high, second lower high. Does that make sense, Sharon? Okay. So that's the premise I'm operating under. So this pullback, this shelf should give me the pullback, and it should leave me a lower high. This should be the lower weak reaction. This is where I'm willing to get short. And I've got my stop above the high high. Right? So I've got sellers up here probably, and sellers at the high high as well. Does that close bother you? No, not at all. Because remember, my order was in here. Right, Al? I've already got my, in fact, my order was in. Hang on, I'm going to have to take this out. I hit the wrong button. Come on, hurry up, Benson. <sighs> okay. Okay, I'm going to have to change that key so it never works. Okay, I put my order in right here. As soon as we did close with separation, I put my order to sell in for the next bar at the test of this upper parallel. I put my order in. See it? And every bar, the bars are, we're much slower now. Look at, we got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven eight bars in and that takes 20 minutes so the bars have slowed down now okay yeah the separation bar was the key for me well we well, not only that we tested my frequency and then did not only did we not follow through we turned on a dime and closed with great separation see that Gina that's the key those two together and I said okay I, I think I'm going to take my shot here. I think this is probably the weak reaction high. Okay? So I've got my order in, and every at every bar, I'm going to move it lower along here. Would I say here you will keep moving the sell limit order down, uh, 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 even if five bars have passed since the test? Um, yeah, this is really not a five-bar rule because I don't have a median line. Okay? I'm going to move it down until I can't afford the stop, Ouija. Then I'll wait for a different structure or give it up. Right? 
how important is the close of the first test for you? It, it doesn't have to be like this, but this, it, it doesn't have to close like this. It could be something else, like we could have other, we leave a shelf and then take out the shelf. But this is enough for me that it made me want to sell, Lewis, okay? It doesn't have to work this way, but it did th in this example. Not the retest, the first test. Oh, I don't care that it closed up uh, here. What I, what I care about is what happened afterwards. That's this. So let's let's walk back. I'm not ready to sell. Are you? Now I am. The light went on. Okay, I get it. Everybody get that? So after this close, I put the order in. And if you wanted more separation, here's more separation. So we leave. About, if price went above the frequency line with the same separation, would you draw a new frequency line and use it to enter? No, I would not. That my logic would not be working, Jose. I'd take, I'd take some time out and try and figure it out. Right? So I would slow down. I might not abandon the trade, but I'd probably slow down and watch it and say, okay, what's going on here? And see if I could find another cue of free of of weakness. But that was enough weakness for me. So let's watch it let's watch what happens because you might be surprised. Remember, BJ and Pat are not short yet. So that's me getting short right here. And I don't care about the close. It doesn't matter to me because my stop is a is a 1.8 higher than this. Okay? It's it's above both of the other highs. So this is only, you know, one I'm I'm out one tick. It's no big deal. I'm not even thinking about it. If you're Gina, you don't you if you're short right here, you don't like this close, right? So we're going to beat that out of you. I don't care. It's part of the plan, okay? We got a stop in, right? Don't you have a stop in? I know. Don't, um, I'm trying to change it right now. Don't you have a stop in? Okay, so you've already paid. Look at, write the check in the air. $180. Take out your pen. If you if you need to, I had one guy, one from the CME, he had uh, fake checks printed up. And he would actually, after watching me do it in the air, he would actually write out a check to himself. Okay, here's the $180. If you just accept the loss. Accept the emotion, accept the loss. It's out of the way now. Okay? I've already taken the loss. Then if it turns into the winner, you get the $180 back, Gina. It's like extra happy time, okay? So accept the loss right at the beginning. Does everybody follow that? Emotionally and financially, eat the loss right away. Write the check in the air, or if you have to, print out some fake trip tra checks on your printer and just write the damn things out. I'm telling you, it helps immensely. Now you now you don't care about it. You know what? I don't care because I've already written the check. It doesn't matter to me. Go ahead. You can't hurt me. It's one stop. I already wrote it out. Go ahead. Go wherever you want. It does help make better trades, Perry. Perry says might help better trades. It does. Uh, listen, it helps my trading, Perry. I do it. People that have seen me trade live, they laugh when they're, they're trying to figure out what I'm doing as I'm writing it in the air. What what is this nut doing? This guy's a crazy man. But it's it you know I have a bunch of stuff like that. I'm just telling you it's it, just eat the loss right at the beginning. Just okay, it's loss. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care if they laugh. I really don't. Would you do it on a hundred on a hundred on a ten thousand dollar per pip? Sure. I I do it on Jose. I there, I take hundred billion dollar positions. And I still write it out. I don't care. 
true acceptance of the loss allows you to maintain equilibrium. Exactly right, Gina. Once I t accept the loss, I don't have to think about it. There's no, no motion left. That's exactly right. Okay? Are we, do we all get it? Any other questions? <coughs> this can really help your trading. <coughs> then you don't have to think about these closes, okay? You've made your decision. Live with your decision. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong. You are, listen, as a trader, you have to accept that you're going to hate. The majority of you will never get above on a long-term average, will never be better than 50-50. But because we have good risk reward, we don't care. It's like being a baseball player. The best baseball players in the world, if they hit 300 or 330, they're gods. Okay? But it's the quality of when they do hit one out of every three times. It's the quality of their hits that count, right? Same thing here. It's the quality of our wins. As long as we control our losses, it's the quality of our wins. Everybody follow? So we've written the check. We're not going to think about it. It's okay. Now, if you didn't get it, I'm in. If you didn't get in, watch. It doesn't plunge. We've got a box. See the box? We come down. Don't make a new low. We're right back at the frequency line. See it? I'm in on this bar. We're right back at the frequency line. You might be scared off if you're, if you're not short, but if you're still going with the top shoulder weak reaction, double tops, triple tops, we do take out the high, but look at the close. See it? And it's also, that's a, that, that is a great pickup. BJ, you guys are just on fire. Uh, uh, BJ and Pat, I'm telling you. Let's do it. If this ends up being the high, it is three drives to the top. Look at the close. See it? Same signature as this close. I, and I get it. It made a new high, but though the BJ and Pat are the ones that grabbed the one, two, three, but look at the close. And it's a forced pivot if it turns here. Yeah. All right. So this is a new <coughs> maximum excursion line. I'll pull in so you can see where I drew it. I drew it from this top to here. So now we're, we're going to measure now if this ends up being the top. how fast this thing moves. Okay? And we'll go that far. Okay. So BJ and Pat are in now, by the way. And, and you know, plus, what, what price did you get in? Plus or minus, same basic area. I'm sure that... Um, 393 and a half. Okay? So everybody be short at 393 and a half. Gina, you wrote the check. So none of this bothers you. Right? Talking about one, two, threes isn't a top shoulder reaction at one, two, three. You, you Keith, you got it. Keith says talking about one, two, threes isn't a top 
to the shoulder to the reaction also a one two three does that make sense that's a great piece of logic Keith okay let me tell you something I'm I'm going through you know the bad cave is being renovated right bad cave one and I'm going through books oh, by the way Lewis I have no idea how much it's going to cost me, but you've got a nice stack of books sitting there. Uh, my wife's taken to the post office. And um, um, I was one of the books I was looking at, um, which is one that we're going to sell on the website for charity, is you know these farmers in the Midwest that came up with one, two, threes. Remember, Amos was 78 years old when he died in 1978. So when was his prime learning time? Right when these guys were doing their thing. The people that wrote in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they are the smartest technical analysis traders. I'm pretty smart, but these guys were great. There's, you know, there's, and I'm not talking about W.D. Gann. Most of the people I'm talking about are, you've never heard of. They're in little bitty, you know, if you're a poetry guy, you'd call them chat books. They're in little bitty books, 10, you know, or maybe maybe a collection of 30 charts that are just annotated. And if you have, you know, either lots of money or too much time on your hands, you can actually find them. Well, it's harder now than it was in the early 90s. A lot of books have disappeared. A lot of the book... Because of the internet, and everybody you know is relying on reading ebooks and all that stuff. A lot of these, you know, I, I don't know about you. When I was in college, I started a great habit, which was visiting used bookstores. Because the University of Chicago had has two great used bookstores. They're online now. Um, but I would go in on Thursdays, which is when they got their they bought in bulk, and the huge trucks would show up, and they just take them off and just line them up they were in wooden crates they just line up the wooden crates in the back room okay and I bought so many books there the guy would let me buy any book I wanted before they sorted it for a dollar a book and there wasn't a Thursday I went that I didn't leave with yeah I, I there wasn't a Thursday I le that I went there that I didn't leave with whatever I had in my pocket, which is usually 150 bucks worth of books, okay? And I have some books from the, you know, I bought plenty of books in the set. I still have some of them here. That I, give, I gave one to my wife, which was, uh, oh, yeah, I have, sure. Those books I'm not giving away, but um, though I have some from the 1700s that I bought for a book for just one buck. But, some, but a lot of them are about trading. You know, I look through... If I look, if I look through, you know, for after a year, I would find like three softbound collection of pay. I, he'd he'd say, "You're gonna pay a buck for that? That's crap." I'd say, "You know what? If you see any more like this, just put them behind the counter. I'll pay you ten dollars for them." Because they they throw them away. Nobody would buy that shit. So I'd get you know ten in a year maybe. But now those are gone. Nobody wants that kind of stuff. Because they're reading, you know, uh, uh, whatever. The, oh, I, I was going to turn around and look at the bookshelf. The books are all gone, literally. They're all they're all crated up and they're going on their on their merry way to the libraries and stuff. So it's all on Kindle. Well, this stuff isn't on Kindle. It's gone. Kindle didn't get this stuff. These guys have been dead for a long time. So as people's estates were liquidated, it went through peop, you know these different used bookstores and the University of Chicago has two of the best in the world and there's one up by Northwestern and I would just I don't know why I don't know why I would do that on Thursdays but I would go in the afternoon and spend a couple hours just looking through the stuff and you, you'd have to wash your hands afterwards from all the dust but I would just collect all the stuff and uh, take it to my office at the University of Chicago and Saul Bellow and people like that would come in and look through it and he'd tell me some stories about one of the books or whatever so anyway Keith, I absolutely like that. One, one, two, three describes also our top, our shoulder, and our weaker reaction. Absolutely. Not yet. We came in the room too late and got in at 120. Entry price is 391. Stop at 394. Okay. 
And you were out last night? Me too. But I think, I don't know, we'll see if we got out the same place. But So, there, BJ and Pat are not in the room at the moment. They're probably having a nice lunch. I'm short. Okay, so now this is... Now, if you got short either here or now, you, now you're trying to get short after this close. Take a look at the down tick here. You think some people got caught long? That's not a gap. That's a down tick. There just wasn't a bid. You, I mean, that is ugly. If you're long, you don't want to see that. Why is that a down tick? Because it's not a gap. I, this is from the exchange. I actually went through the front month contract. Okay. This was the last seller. Okay. He sold here. And when you're selling on the exchange, you're hitting a bid. You know that, right, Gina? Okay. The next bid was right here. There wasn't a bid in between. The next bid was right here. So he cleaned everybody out at the double bottoms, and the next bid was more than a tick below, was one half of a tick below the double bottom. So he sold everything there was, and there wasn't anybody left to trade here. He kept right on selling all the way to at least here. See it? down tick it's like a gap yeah except it's this is not a real I mean it is a gap don't don't get me wrong but it's formed because there's nothing but sellers there are no buyers okay this isn't a gap at the end of the day or a gap on the weekend this is I'm a seller where's the buyer there are none well it's okay if you see it as a gap Gina I'm just explaining to you why it formed would that be a fulcrum? Sure. Why not? Absolutely, why not? Make it some funky color. Yes, why not? That's, you know, this right here is hello, goodbye. Yeah, this is a significant gap, not a regular vanilla gap. Yeah, you know, when you see this, if you're long, you're screwed. Yeah, David says get out. So, you know what? If you see this, I, you can go to the market and get out. You can't go short. Don't impulse go short. But it's a good sign to get out. People are long, and lots of people are long. I mean, it, look, everybody. Here's another one on the way up here. Look, this guy's buying. Here's where it closes. The next offer is right here. So you can see they were in a frenzy to get long here. See it? It's like a shark feed. You see them? They're just chasing price like little kids. And here, oops. Wide range bar, sure. Oops. The door is really small, isn't it? Not good. Uh, somebody asked me about fresh, what is fresh sellers? David, what does fresh sellers look like? Well, let's pretend the gap wasn't here. Okay, obviously the gap is enough to tell you that there's fresh sellers, right? David, you see that? Come back, David. But if forget about the gap for a second. When it takes out this shelf, that's fresh sellers. That's fresh, aggressive sellers. Everybody see it? That's the wake up. Oops. Okay, now I get it. Fresh sellers. Okay. So now you got to work your way into short somehow, some way, if you're not already short. We're short here. 
you can relax mentally. We're short here. We don't care about this pull up because our stop is so far up there. Let me show you the stop size again so you don't get all antsy. Look how far away we were from our stop. Okay. Yeah, this bar is the, you know, if you needed another tell, and look at the close on the bottom, right? Here's the tell, this bar, the gap or down tick is the second. Here's the third tell. You don't need any more than that, do you really? All right. Here's a headstander. Um, if you're not short, you're hoping that you're going to get an opportunity somewhere in here to get short, right? Oh, and we've got a median line now. So we're, sorry, one, two, three, four. Right there, we can draw in a median line. You want? Just to give us probable path of price. Pullback. Geez, you're hoping for either a pullback to this maximum excursion line or the upper parallel if you're not short. And the head standard gets rejected with another head standard in the opposite direction. A little bit wild for my taste. If I wasn't short already, I'd probably be on the sidelines going, I don't like these bars. Take out the second shelf, see it? So any se any sense of buying just gets reversed. Look at it. Gets reversed. And we're leaving lower highs and lower lows. And I need this here. Lower highs and lower lows. Pulling back. So we're testing the quality of the whole high, this whole section. Yes? Now we're finally testing a high. Let's let let's not be I know I know I don't I know it's I don't know what time it is. My, the clock is gone, by the way, if you guys wonder. I have no sense of what time it is. The clock has not appeared yet because there's another coat of paint going up today after I'm done trading. My wife's the painter. Quality at the top. That's what we're testing, okay? So we're pulling back, and unfortunately, that's what we get. Right there. And that's it. And once again ugly fresh sellers Ugh. now BJ and Pat are short somewhere in here right around in here right BJ does BJ ever type or is it just you Pat you do all the work oh okay just checking uh, I would move to break even would you no. Look, here's the size of my stop. Why would I move to break even? Why would you move to break even? No, 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 no. I want an answer. Tell me why. What you're thinking? Because it, it might make sense. I'm not always right. I just think I'm right all the time, Al. So what you're thinking? Don't just roll over on me. I didn't realize your stop was that big. Well, it's not as big as you think. It's 1.8. Look. See it? We're just zoomed in. Okay? This is only eight, 180 bucks. That's all. I know it looks like forever, doesn't it? Yeah, I put it over here because I want you to realize the magnitude magnitude of a move you're going to... It looks like we've gone a long way. We haven't really gone anywhere yet. Okay. 
That's why I say, even if you got in here, take a look. Selling at 391.80 is the same as selling where we sold. Same stop. Okay. Now we're at the median line of our modified shift. Anybody taking profit there? What's the problem? No risk reward. No, but I'd go to break even there. Okay, Matt. Well, let, let me go through the exercise with you. There's. You could. That's fine. But two to one is down below here. I understand what you're saying. You're at the median line and it slows down. Okay. I get that. He's saying 80%. Okay. We're going from 80% to 43%. I'll give you that one. Okay. If you want to go to break even there, I'm going to give you that one. Go ahead. I think that that's logic. And especially for, you know, regular sized accounts, I think that makes sense. I'm, I'm going to give you that one, Matt. I think that's good logic, okay? So Matt's going to break even here on his trade, okay? Anybody else? Okay. Gina says her too. Well, we're all still short, David. We just want to know if you're going to go to break even or if you're going to stay at the original stop. See, we're to me, we're testing the quality of this bottom. And we're still testing it. Look where we are. But, okay. Nobody's answering me, so I'll move on. See, we're still testing the b quality of this bottom. Well, maybe that's a reason, actually, to go to break even. Good point, uh, Matt. So, the... Me so far, the median line looks pretty good, doesn't it? So it has slowed down. It's even if price, yeah, listen, even if price is going to go down, it often stops and slows down at the median line before it accelerates, right? 14% of the time it congests at the median line okay we pretty much ignore that part but that's what's going on here at the moment back at the median line a close to the median line I think we're gone and now we're at twice our stop now I'm at break even Matt okay but I like your logic if I were you guys when you get to the median line and we're testing this area that's two reasons to go to break even. I like it, Matt. One, that we're going from 80 miles an hour to 43 miles an hour. And two, we're testing the quality of this bottom. If this bottom holds, it's good to be at break even, right? Because we're not looking for a fourth move up. We're just looking for three. Does that, right? That's key's logic. Three drives to the top. A top, a shoulder, a weak reaction to sell. So we're not looking for a fourth. So that makes sense. I like that, Matt. All right, so you have break even. Comes back over the median line, but we are leaving lower highs. We're at our line of maximum excursion. Yeah, BJ says we're in. BJ and Pat are in now, somewhere in here. 91 and a half, something like that. And our line of maximum excursion, let's see if it holds. We're just fluttering around the median line. And by the way, if you wanted a secondary entry, how about this one with a stop up here? Or this one with a stop up of the shelf? Those are all fine. They're, I mean, they're not as great as being up here, but if you missed it, the working your way in here is fine. Okay? And just break in, okay? Now you can see the boxes, and how you decide to trail is up to you. But remember the scale. I should keep my going to go with me. Let me bring my going to go over here. And um, basically, I'm I'm going to use something like 
this like a buck above a box when I when I do decide to move I'm going to I'm going to try and stay back okay but I'll and I'll use a slightly smaller profit stop follow me okay so what are we doing right now yeah we broke through the bottom now we're looking for a new bottom right this line of maximum excursion seems steep but it also seems to be working doesn't it okay we come up to the top of this box whoops right off the shelf yeah this crazy bars again so here's the size of our stop uh, now this seems so steep it, it it can't possibly work right but it is this is a, this is a high and this is a pullback see it it can't possibly work right Look how steep it is. It's almost vertical. Oh my God. Matt says I'd be looking for a good exit. Oh, Matt, come on. You're just getting to the good meat. Matt, let him puke first. It's not vertical yet. Wait, it'll go vertical. Enjoy the ride, my friend. Listen, if you're looking for the exit, here's the lower parallel. Take your money. You made uh, five bucks. Nothing wrong with that. Or take your money here. You made, uh, uh, I don't know if I can do the math, three and a half plus three, and you made seven bucks. Okay? Okay? You want your money? Take it. It's fine. Now it's going vertical. But remember, vertical often goes further than you think. What process are we in right now? What, what are we trying to do? Oh, yeah, we're look, price discovery. We're looking for a bottom. We got nothing down here. What, what's below here? Think of the picture I drew before we started. What's down here? Where are we going? The mountain, where is it? What's the price? Come on, you got to have some memory. We've been through, you know, 380. 380 or bust, right? The top was exactly the same. The bottom's going to be the same. Okay? It might get more, but it's going to give you at least the mountain. It, it just will. This is just a big frickin' range. And a lot of people lost a lot of money in this range. And hopefully you weren't one of them. Hopefully you made money. Because I got to tell you, I think I made seven trades in the last ten days. These two trades were just falling off the log easy. As long as, you, I mean, you could just write down Amos's logic and follow it and go, okay, yeah, I'm sure, okay. Going back down to the bottom. This maximum excursion line is so steep it couldn't possibly hold. Look at it hold. Looking for a bottom. We're just drilling a hole looking for a bottom. Look at it. We're going to the center of the earth. It's it's so fast. I, I should say it's so steep. It's so fast in a space 
way, in a, in a three-dimensional way, that it's almost impossible to box in. Do you see it? You could, and all the boxes would work, but it's just, it's, it's hard to follow it. All right, we're at 380. If you want to take your money at 380, just take, you can take your money at 380. That's fine. There's no reason to, though. Look at it. Let's not trade to the left. Let's trade to the right. Is there anything here telling us take your money? So why would you take your money? Don't trade to the left. Trade to the right. Okay. This thing, there's no, there's nobody here holding up the lantern saying, okay, take your money. And it's also prime time New York, and these guys are puking. There's no box to hide a stop? Yeah, right here. At 390. I, I understand. You got a lot on the table. I get that. But you, the wind is in your hair, Ouija. Enjoy it. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't get many rides that are just, uh, that are like this one way. Look at this beautiful cascade lower. And they're not clearly defined cascades where it's easy to leave stops. But, you know, when it happens, just enjoy it. Don't be nervous. How many times you guys heard me say, trade and be decisive? So, okay, if it's running in your, I'm using my hands, if it's running in your favor, relax, be decisive. I got this, it's good. I'm enjoying this. I paid my buck 80 up above, remember Gina? That's what this pays for. The buck 80 above, that's the ticket to this roller coaster ride, to just relax and don't be greedy and grabby. Mm. You know what? When it's doing this, Carlos, you're allowed to be greedy. Just sit back and enjoy. You don't. There aren't that many trades where you get to just sit back and watch everybody else scrabble around. Okay? Oh, greedy is taking it too soon? Okay. Yeah, just enjoy it. At this point, you actually get to say to yourself, I'm right. I'm boxed in. I can't take a loss. I don't know that I want to, I mean, you can play this game if you want, but I'm not sure that I want, I mean, here, you want three-dimensional stops, you can do this if you want, but I'm not sure I want to do that. It works in this time, in this sense, but I bet I can show you 50 trades that end up getting to the bottom of the mountain where it doesn't work, okay? So, but you could do it if you want. If you, you know, and if you're satisfied with 385, that's fine. If you want to take your profit, uh, Matt told me that he did, would have taken his profit at the warning line of this um, magenta at 385. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with uh, 850 bucks? Nothing, right? 850 bucks is a nice trade. You risk 180 to make 850. Is this more art than using median lines as targets? Um, I couldn't find. I, I mean, Jade, I couldn't find a median line. It's so steep. There's no way to find the median line, right? You, you could draw all you want. Still learning about vertical and vertical. Yeah, I mean, you can draw all you want. There's only one thing that works. Letting your plan unfold is being greedy and fearful. Oh, not, sorry, I reread, I misread that. Not letting your plan unfold is being greed, greedy and fearful. Yes, just go with the plan. Okay? And I know it's gotten to 380, but is there any sign here that this thing is slowing down yet? I want everybody to answer this question. Is there any sign that this is slowing down? Yeah, it's accelerating. So why why would you be worried and why would you be doing other than just enjoying the plan? What is the plan when we see something like this? The plan is to just let it go. We got a profit stop wherever. I'm here. 
you know, if you want to move on one of these, you can. But on a lot of these vertical moves, they're sloppier and you will get stopped out on one of these. But when it's moving down like this, I know when you first draw this maximum excursion line, you can't possibly believe it'll go down this fast. But it is. That's how that's how screwed people are. Because they got it that backwards. This is the people that got long from the move from 380 to 395 and didn't get out and now are being forced out. Because they, in their mind, they, they could not believe that it could possibly go back to 380. It's impossible. Okay? It was only a day ago that it was there. It's impossible that it can go back there. Of course it can go back there. It can go, price can go anywhere. Price goes where it wants to go. So let's see what we get. Again, I have no, let me see if I can figure out what time it is. 9.30, we're not doing bad. Okay, so it looks like we're going a little vertical, doesn't it? Now, somebody said just stop yourself out when it breaks the maximum excursion line. You can do that if you want. That's fine. I don't care. That may, that's, that's logical. I, I don't know that I'm going to do it, but you, know, you can if you want. You're still not stopped out maybe you're stopped out but it looks like it's going a little vertical doesn't it I mean horizontal we're no longer doing these really minor cascades now if this is a cascade it's a biggie but we've gone from one slow descent to now we're horizontal well change in behavior it's not a change in trend though right well be careful we just says maybe we found a low all we've done at the moment is done what? What are we doing? We're in a range. Don't say maybe we found a low. Okay? We're moving sideways. It's a range. And what's the... We're buying time? Okay, yep. Uh, good. Time is catching up to vertical price. Okay, so in a range, what are the odds? 50-50. Right? So we're testing the extremes. We're at the quality what's the quality of this bottom? We tested the top, we know what that is. But even here, let's open it up some more. So you're not overwhelmed by the fall. Let's look at it this close. Okay? When I change when I do tick bars, I look about this close, just believe it or not. All right, so yes, it's gone horizontal, but is it really doing anything? It's not doing anything. The people that were in a panic have sold, okay? And almost nobody caught the down move. And the few people that did, some of them are taking their money. That's what this is. Okay? But for the most part, this is the market going, oh, my God. There's so many people lying dead from this move. Nobody wants to trade. So it's sitting still. Okay? Yeah, they're sweeping the bodies out of the way. That's exactly right, Carlos. All right. So now the next part is we need some new blood to come in and either buy or sell. But right now, the existing players are either dead or they have the position that they want. Does that make sense? Okay. And most people, by the way, are out of this market. That's why it's trading this way. We're looking for a top. Let's let's get a little more perspective. Okay, so we've come down vertically. Now we're searching for a top. See it? We want to know the quality of this bottom. Now we're searching for a top. Triple tops, quadruple tops, bust them anyway. Still looking for a top. Still looking for a top. We're st it looks like we've gone for a long time, but we're still at 380 under 381. Looks like we're going to look for a top. Now we're at 381. 
and I marked it as a possible alternating pivot. We're retesting, looking at the quality of this bottom. See it? What do we probably have in front of us? Anybody? If you say hello quick, you, you can catch Jeannie before she leaves. Hi, Jeannie. Jeannie says hello. She's gone. Um, we've got a, we're testing the bottom of the quality and the quality of the bottom, and now we probably have a top in, right? Well, it's not that we have a slightly higher low. This is flat. This is all within one tick, okay? We probably got, we're testing the quality bottom, and we probably have our high in. Quadruple bottoms. Quintep, whatever. All right, we bust through. I can see people loading up long here. And Jose, they just got it up the giggy, didn't they? Whoops. They're unloading right now. See it? Looking for a high, checking the bottom, break the bottom. Now the worst that happens is we get stopped out at 383. It's not so bad. The worst that happens is we get thousand bucks. That's not bad, is it? No? Yes? Come on. All right. All day long. That's right. So now you move stop because we had a better structure. Well, no. We were looking for a top. We found a top. When we take out this bottom, it confirms this top, doesn't it? Gina? Get it? Gina, do you get it? Okay. On a 180-minute time tick, a uh, 1000 bucks is excellent. Sure, well, 1000 bucks is on a 20-minute time is great. Just trying to figure out why we move a stop. Let me tell you again, Gina. We're checking the quality of this bottom. We've got the bottom. We're looking for a top. How do we know we have a top? When it takes out the bottom. Well, I okay, I told you, you could use those, it, those minuscule ones, but on the majority of those trades, you on one of them, you would have got stopped out. Unless you go two back. If you want, that's fine. And again, a profit's a profit. So, what's the worst that happens? You end up with six hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars instead of a thousand. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to kill you. It's still going to be a great trade. Okay. So, if you need to put in a profit stop, go ahead. I have no problem with that. Okay, Gina. As I've told you in mentoring, we can always lengthen your profits. It's just if you if we can get you to trade at least three or four to one, we can always lengthen them out on those trades like this that run. That's easy to teach. If you can get in like this, we can always make it bigger. Okay. All right. So we've taken out the bottom. We've got our profit stop in on this high. Any questions on that? We no longer have any idea where we're going. We're in price discovery, aren't we? Look to the right, because we're still falling. We're in price discovery. We've got one alternating pivot, which ended up being our high. OK, we broke through the bottom. Now we're looking for a bottom, right? We're looking for a bottom. I wish this hadn't popped up here because it drives me crazy, but it did. I guess I can't catch them all. But we're looking for a bottom. We got a pullback. So much for the pullback. We're looking for the bottom. See it? 
even the pullbacks are just minuscule. Okay, we got a headstander. Okay, complete separation from the low and follow through. Opens on its low, closes on its high. Okay, I'm going to mark that as an alternating pivot potential. Okay, great time to refresh frequency. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I want to refresh frequency and see if I can figure out because before it was so steep, there's no way to draw anything, right? So because it's slowed down, I should have the opportunity to draw something unless I get stopped out first, okay? Any questions on why I would do that? I'm just trying to... More logic, right? Logical profit target, right? I don't know. What pe people keep seeing change in behavior. What change in behavior? Price is going, you know, when it goes vertical, price is going to slow down. I, I mean, we're still making new lows. Don't be so quick to think that we've made bottoms, okay? We're still looking for a bottom. We don't know what the bottom is. The problem is I don't have a target, right? I got a profit stop, and it's 383, and that's fine. But I don't know anything other than that. So is this a bottom? Quality of the bottom, right? Clump of highs here. Is this a bottom? We don't take out the low. Now we take out the clumps. Okay, so we got quality of the bottom. Now we're looking for a top. Now, don't get too excited. We're only two or three cents off the low low, okay? And price fluctuates, right? Price fluctuates. I need it to go up in a weird way so that I can hide my stop, right? Or get a probable path of price to the downside. Otherwise, I might as well just take my money. And there's nothing wrong with that, too. You, you know, you could have just said, left two lows, and when it pulls back here, let me just take my money. Nothing wrong with that. Fine. But you, if you can, exercise patience and try and build logic, right? And try and put it in. Okay, so let me show you where this comes from. This is another maximum excursion line. Here's our prior high. This end, when we do this and close on the low, here's a new maximum excursion line. Here's one of the original maximum excursion lines, by the way. That's how far we've come. Okay. Okay, I can now draw on the median line. I now have information, or more information at least. Maybe I'm looking for a test of the median line. You want out at the median line? Fine. You want out at the prior bottom? Fine. You want to box in profits? I'm good with that too. Do you see that? I was not sure about going into the weekend, however. We like the trend and just put our stops in. Yep. Okay. Well, let's not give it away because some, some people might not have followed through the weekend, BJ. So I'll, I'll just stop talking about that. But... Now you can see that people got caught long. Can you see them? Look at look at the quality of the selling. All right, leave a bottom mirror bars, but the market is so confused that the mirror bars have the same open, high, and close, so they mean nothing. All right, we move higher. Price seems to be moving with, take a look, it seems to be moving with the frequency of this median line, doesn't it? Can you see these? So maybe we've learned something. So, you know, you you got a lot of possibilities. You can go for the median line. 
You can go for this bottom if you think this is an important bottom. You got a lot of money in this trade. How many of you looked at natural gas this morning? Don't look now if you haven't looked. All right, looks like everybody did. All right. So it is, uh, let's see, 1.30 on a Friday. Okay, we're back at the bottom again. You can take your money and say, you know what, I don't, I don't, I don't really want this position over the weekend. Might you tighten your stop? Hey, sure, why not? Sure, you could. If you want, Matt... But unfortunately, it doesn't buy you much. Okay, it buys you a it buys you a penny and a half, three eighty one and a half. You can do that. That's the best you can do, though, if you want to be logical. Here's the other thing you could do, though, Matt. You can say, you know what? It's um, one thirty on Friday, and I really don't want to hold a position over the weekend. I think I'll just I'm at the prior lows. I'm testing the bottom. It's at the mountain. I think I'll just take my money because it's Friday at 1.30, right? Okay, so you got short at 3.93, you're out at 3.76 and a half. Somebody can do the math. Doesn't suck, right? BJ did not move their stop and neither did I. Right, exactly right. BJ, I just stayed with you. I'm still up here. 107 well 107 that's uh, 1700 bucks at this point Ouija says okay yeah it's a it's a magnificent trade and we risk it's 10 to 1 right now or 9.4 to 1 thank you guys I, I appreciate you doing the math okay so we're testing the bottom what's the quality of this bottom okay it's let's watch the time it's uh, not actually the bars are moving fast again it's 215. Okay, we're at the maximum the old maximum excursion line. Let's see if we get to our new maximum excursion line. And you can see the bars are small. That means there's a lot of volume going through. See it? Right? So there's a lot of volume here on the close. There's a lot of interest on this close. 2.30, 3 o'clock, and you can see some people are caught short. See them? Now, most of you would have taken out if you had this median line. This, a lot of you did. I don't, even, I don't even know if anybody else had this median line, but I put in that last median line up above. Most of you have taken it out, but I leave it in for timing. And Price had a lot. Uh, Price had a lot of trouble getting above it. Can you see it? And that's the close right there. And you know, I'm with BJ. My stop was at 383. I did not move my stop in. You could. Let's change this uh, to the could color. Could I didn't? Could he could also have just taken the money. How many people would have done that? It's if this is a Friday. At this price, it comes back down and retests as low. It's 1:30 in the afternoon. How many people would have just taken the money and said, "Okay, thank you. It's Friday. I don't, I, I really don't want it over the weekend." Okay, fine. I thought about it. 
the gray beards were split. I asked their opinion. They were split. BJ said they thought about it. BJ and Pat. And I thought, eh, you know what? I paid to watch the opening with my 383 stop. I think I'll just... I wrote the check out. Gina. The difference between... 397 and 383. I'll pay for that to just pay and you know and see the other guy's cards. Stick with the plan, right? It's like poker. All right, you know what? I'll call. Let me see your cards. So I'll see what you know on Sunday at five o'clock. I'll see and I'll see you at Sunday. Let's see what the opening is. How big were you on this trade? I was all in. Yeah, holy shit's the right word. But I was, you know what? I love this trade. I was so excited um, to show you guys this trade. I spent like three hours last night cleaning this thing up um, because I just, I just love this trade. It not, it's not the biggest trade of the year or anything else. It was, it's just by the book. It's by the Amos book. You know, I've taken Amos and put it on day on intradays. It was beautiful homework, wasn't it? Yeah, I could not have planned better homework. For those of you that that did the homework and beat, you know, BJ did a live, did the trade. That's the best kind of homework, BJ and Pat. So, hopefully, some of you did the homework live, or peeked in now and then. We're ba we're basically done, Bob. Bob, well, maybe do one bar before you won. You ready? Here, watch. Now you can leave, Bob. I paid for that bar, okay? You can leave. Yep, hello. Take care. Have a good week, Bob. I'll talk to you later. Um, uh, BG and Pat said, I told David I thought you ran at the top. Yeah, pretty darn close. Question, I'm currently using eSignal as my platform, which is fast. I'm definitely devoting a good, good, good part of my life to trading. Should I go to NeoTicker since you said it's the best? I want to maximize all my tools and respect your opinion. Excellent class. We'll do my homework for evening. Um, if I were you, Jorge, I would stay with eSignal and Ensign. It's easier to draw. You're not doing anything. You don't need to do any programming. And unless you're going to buy data, I used to buy data um, or exchange data with a lot of people from different platforms. For example, on NeoTicker, you can plug in TradeStation data. Um, the the I can't remember the name of the program that um, IB uses now, TWS. But anyway, what's my take on that bar? Yahoo. Does this gap remind you of the beginning of the week when you got short after the gap up? Yeah, I'm. Here's what I'm. Here's what I don't know. BJ, uh, what are you thinking? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. BJ says goodbye. <laughs> Why did it happen? Because people were still long. Look at what they did on the close. They made a bet on the close, Al, and they were wrong weren't they they wrote their checkout we wrote a BGA BJ wrote a 383 checkout I wrote a 383 checkout and at least at this bar they were wrong but the question is what are you going to do after this bar what the heck do you do that's a big ass gap look at it well Shane counts it from here to here. I count it from here to here. That's a big gap, man. Well, where are you going to move your stop, Gina? Mm. Uh, well, Sharon says can take the money. Why not? Sure. Why not? Jose and um, Ouija say take can use the top of the gap as a profit stop. Yep. Either one's fine. We were out at uh, 373.8, no stop, 
and too much to risk. That's a, I, I, no problem with that at all. They, they just went to the market right here. I did this. I was cleaning up the charts for you guys, I, and I'm watching this, and I go, holy. Well, I'm boxed in here. What do I want to do? Uh, great. You want the, what do you think the Greybeards said? You, it was unanimous. Get out. Yeah, take the money. Yep. What do you think I did? <laughs> I waited. Yeah, you're right. I did this. It's going to show up in a minute. I said, you know what? I'm too busy to look at the chart. Here's what I'll do. If it if it breaks a buck into the frequency into the gap, just get me out. I paid to take a look. I'm going to give it a chance to take out the low. Because if it takes out this low, we might have another 20 cents, right? I don't know that this is the low. I thought long and hard. Yeah, if it dropped, it would. Yeah, I mean, it would be a big drop. I think. I think we might see 320. Who knows? But you know, I paid for it with the 383. Now I'm going. You know what? I could get out at 373 and a half, or I could stay in and 376. I'll pay the three cents for that. PJ Pat said they thought about it. I said, yeah. You know what? I'm going to bed. Or I'm gonna. I'm gonna get out of the trading room. Actually, what happened is. My wife threw me out so she could move some more books and printers and stuff so she can paint another wall later today. So she said, hey, I need some time in the church. So I, I said, okay, I'll just, you know what? And they said, you know, you just get out. I said, I'll tell you what, just put me one buck above the gap. And don't worry about it. We got a grillion dollars, who cares? And, and isn't it fun? So, yeah, there, there there's my stop right there, so. We're one buck in. Uh, uh. I'm gone. I'm asleep. Actually, I'm just getting up. So when I, when I walk out of the bathroom, and I'm really sleepy this morning. I was really sleepy. But my stomach was upset from the. I, yeah, it was a great trade. Um, I I went. Oh well, never mind. I don't have to think about it. You know, and uh, the great beards were actually were everybody was asleep because they, you know, they executed me and everybody was just like dog tired. They all wanted to see if it broke the low, so they stayed up all night playing poker. So, um, yeah, so it ended up being whatever. Um, I'm out at uh, 376, short at 393 and a half. Somebody do the math for me. And uh, BJ and Pat, uh, I think you, I trumped you on the entry but you certainly trumped me on the exit so great trade guys you guys you guys did great any way you look at it, it was a nice trade and um, let's follow what would you do after the gap well once you woke up you should see that immediately It's in the gap now, okay? And what are they likely to do once they're in the gap, which is why I put my stop there. They're likely to try and fill it. They might not. If they don't, it's going to be a big failure. Where did BJ Pad jump? They entered at 91.5. 9.7 risk reward, 17.5 bucks, so 1,750 bucks, Ouija says. Yep, thank you. So, there we are filling the gap, and I, I even have, I haven't looked at this at all since we ain't, we've been in class. But median line looked pretty good, didn't it? Jesus, look! At, I should have just put an order. Anyway, that is live. Now it's just doing nothing. People don't know what to do again. So let's pull a little bit off here. I like that. That's the trade. Let me repeat it again. Top 
shoulder. See the weakness, expect the pendulum pull back, sell at frequency or at weakness. Does that make sense? And I like Keith's, think of it as a major one, two, three drive and a failure, right? That, that's, that, that sums it up very, very good. I don't know if Amos ever read, those, read that little book. I'm sure all of you are going to end up uh, reading it when we, when we do it, but, um, but whatever. It, you know, it's simple, easy. It's not some curve fit nonsense. It's not black and white, don't get me wrong. It is what? It's just logic, right? You just look in, and it's got a lot of art in it. But it works pretty damn good once you get down to the point where you can understand what you're doing. Oh, you can't, Maceo, you can't buy it. We're, gonna, we're going to reprint it at Market Geometry. And it, it'll be very cheap. And all the money to go, will go to charity. Uh, we'll probably we may even do an ebook if you guys want. I don't care. Whatever you guys want to do, I don't really care. But it's been out of print. Uh, a guy named Donald Mack tried to bring it back into print, and he went bankrupt in about a week because he he tried to do it in really ornate fashion, and people are just not going to pay for it. Most people think that the stuff written in the, other than W. D. Gann. The stuff written in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, which was the golden world of technical analysis, most people think it's crap. And no, those were the guys that had time to think and did their homework. People today are data sifters. They're not actually logical thinkers. They're not Albert Einstein. They're not Dick Feynman. Instead, they, they just look for arbitrage opportunities. Arbitrage opportunities don't last very long, okay? That's not trading. So, you know, reading Einstein's bio and amazed of the thinking and visualizations. Oh, and that's what you should be doing here. Yeah, they're, today they're Ben Bernanke. You got that right. I don't know about. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know about uh, Miss Yellen, but we'll see. So anyway, I hope you like this. Before I would have thought that. That was a bad stop, and you should have taken your money on the gap after watching many of your trades. Waiting pays off big time. Well, it you know what? It doesn't always pay off, but every once in a while, Jose, it pays off big. And it didn't cost me anything. I st actually, I made a little bit. But it didn't cost me anything, right? So even on the stop, I, I write the check, and I go, okay, I'm at 383. Am I willing to write the check and go into the evening. Well, I, I move, actually moved down right before the close or right, at the, right after the close. I said, okay, let's let, I wrote the check. You know, let's see. I mean, they might get past me, but they, if they do, they do. That's fine. I'll pay for it. But what did I get? Instead, I, got, I did get a better fill, but, you know, I wrote the check. Write the check out, just like you're writing a stop, right? That makes sense? If you feel more comfortable taking the money, take the money. That's fine. Writing the check should quench your desire for break-evens without structure. Yeah, it should. All you want to do is just deal with the emotions. Make the emotions go away. That's all. And the way, to, the way I've found to do it, maybe it doesn't work for you, is just write the check. Even on the stop. Well, I, I can't figure out how to move from 383. Well, what do I get from 383? I get a chance to take a look at this bottom. If this bottom breaks, there'll be more to the downside. Is that worth the 383? Yeah, I think that's worth the 383. Then we actually leave a top, so I'll go to that top. Then on Sunday night, uh, do I want to stay? Well, you know, the worst that happens to me is I get stopped out of 381. Oh, you know what? I'll write the check and pay for taking a look at the opening. Does that? pay off? Yeah, this time it does. It doesn't always pay off, but 
Sometimes it pays off. This paid off nicely, but sometimes it pays off really big. If this bottom had gotten broken, whoosh, you know, maybe that'll happen, you know, once a month, once a quarter, whatever. So, anyway, I don't know what was new here. I did show you where we came, where I came up with maximum excursion lines, but um, you know, I don't know that it was particularly different than than what you've seen. But you know, it's an example of the trading early part. That's true. That was a great example of you can be right because you would have been right trading there, right? correct? But you put yourself in a no-win situation. The sharp excursion line was very helpful. Okay. Yep. It's hard to it's hard to believe that this line would work, isn't it? Hard to believe. I know when I drew it, I thought, oh my God. Gina says, I need to think on that part because I'm always looking for a top bottom. Okay. Well, Amos told you how to find a top and a bottom, Gina. And we've talked about it, I don't know, 50 times in this recording. And I, I'll tell you what. T take Keith's simple yet powerful digestion of it and keep it in the back of your mind. It's a major one, two, three drive to the top or a one, two, three drive to the bottom. Top shoulder reaction. Okay? It doesn't mean there, are, there aren't other ways to trade it at tops and bottoms, but that's a, that's a great, that's a great way to trade. Okay? All right, so I hope you guys liked it. I was really excited last night cleaning this chart up. I just, I just had so much fun with this. I don't know about you, BJ and Pat. I just had so much fun with this with this trade, and this was like this was the icing on the cake. Writing this check to see the gap, and I was like five o'clock. I can't wait. Oh, I can wait. I got to run in and take a look. So, all right. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, I I said I was going to send out invoices, but I, I I over the weekend I didn't, but I will get to them. So, this was one of my best trades ever, David said, and I will watch this over and over. Great, David, you caught this one good, as well. Oh my God, you guys are on fire. We've got some people just hitting the cover off the ball. You know, well, I got out too soon. I don't, I don't, you know, it's early on in your uh, profit career, isn't it? Okay, remember what I said. We can, we can lengthen your profit targets. Don't worry about that. It, if you can get to doing... Did do the homework. Sorry, I forgot to send it last night, but I did learn much from your trade day. Oh, no problem. It's okay, Petra. As long as you did the homework. Even if you didn't do the homework, that's fine. I'll give you more. Don't worry. Very enlightening regarding Amos' teaching and putting it all together. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Scotty. It's nice to see students doing the same trades. as It is nice. Isn't it, Jay, to see? You would really print the checks? Oh, I write in the air, David. But you might want to try... If that's not satisfying for you, then on your computer, just write, use some fake checks. Google checks, and they'll show you some check things. Just, you know, put four or five on a page and print out a 100 of them and cut them up and just put them on a the stack over on the side. That's what one of my old partners, Joe, does. He used to laugh at me. Now he does it religiously. It was really great to see my own homework and hear your analysis. Yeah, your homework was very similar, man. Hard to take the emotions out of my trading, still working on it. David, write the check. Do the checks. I'm telling you. Anybody that's having trouble with the emotions, Gina, print some checks out. Try it. If it doesn't work for you, throw them in the wastebasket. But remember, David, if you wrote the check and then the trade becomes a winner, you get that $180 back. It's extra. It's like it's like a double win, right? It's the ritual of always accepting the risk. Yeah, we can't get rid of the risk. Risk never goes away. So, okay. Have a happy Monday. Um, lean into the motions. Don't let them push you around. There will always be emotions. Sure. 
hopefully this was a good start to the week and um, I will see you you know throughout the week um, we have evening with the evening with the masters this week right guys okay so I I'll see a lot of you on uh, on Wednesday night um, those of you that are not in it you should consider it um, it's fascinating to see the same principles. I mean, we're developing a little slower in evening because it's only once every other week, but the same principles are showing up there, plus you're learning how to manage um, margin, portfolio risk, equivalent risk. You're learning to trade all kinds of things that you've never thought you would trade before. Um, so... Uh, and some of you may not know, everybody's in a monthly trade right now. Uh, tonight we actually get to talk about uh, our stop on the pound. That's right. So, okay. Have a good Monday. Um, I'll see you sometime this week. And um, sure has been a fun week or two. Take care. I'll see you soon. Thanks for your time.